Well, hello and a very good evening to you all. Welcome to Virtual Church here live from Beauty and Sound on your Sunday evening with a selection of hymns uh, spanning all sorts of different seasons, organ music, chat, and all sorts of things in between. Let's get right into it. First hymn tonight is a wonderful hymn, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, Our Hope for Years to Come. It comes in from, a, um, from one of my patrons, it's uh, Ken Molden, who says, this is a great hymn by Isaac Watts that not only looks backwards to what has been, but looks forwards to what is to come. So let's have a great show tonight. I hope you're sitting comfortably. Go and grab your favourite drink and get involved in the chat. Please do write plus one and your location. Oh God, our help in ages past. course we are in virtual Blackburn where else could we be with uh, a sound like that <clears throat> we've actually done a couple of virtual churches now in Blackburn and it's really rather good for virtual church because it allows me to explore lots of different colors and luckily this organ has all the colors I think you could possibly want so we are in Blackburn today <clears throat> So I do hope that you're all well. I, ho I hope those people watching live are all um, having a great time. Thank you, Carmen, for your claps. Um, Tracy says, I'm doing good at carry-ons. That's absolutely fine if you carry on doing those. Jerry says, yay, all the colours. <laughs> uh, so it's good to see you uh, chatting away. Thank you very much, Robert, as well, for being incredibly generous so soon. So thank you very much, Robert. And of course, a huge hello to everyone who's watching back on Catch Up whilst you're doing your work. 
headphones on and just listening to me play hymns and waffle away. That's very kind of you to join in the fun. Maybe Next. they don't have their headphones on. Maybe they just have you on full blast while they're doing their work. I'm not sure what I'd prefer, actually. Headphones, it would, you'd get the stereo effect. And, um, uh, but on a, on a hi-fi, you would get the real bass rumbling through the walls and through the sofa. Next hymn comes in from Keenan Tunnel, who says, uh, just a new baptis uh, a baptism hymn to me, a uh, song attached church this morning. I should say that some of these hymns are actually from a, a week or two ago. Actually, no, just one week ago, I'm actually catching up. So Ken uh, Keenan requested this hymn last week. So I'm playing it today. I hope you're still with us, Keenan. So when Jesus came to Jordan, ah, multitasking, where is it? Uh, I wish I didn't have to do talk and find hymns at the same time. There it is. When Jesus came to Jordan uh, to be baptized by John, he did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one. He came to share, um, he came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news begins. Uh, and it's to a really well-known tune I arranged. Um, uh, I think this is a, a, has... Oh, no, it's not. It's not arranged by Vaughan Williams at all. The version I know has been arranged by Vaughan Williams. The tune, though, is called King's Lynn, and it's a traditional English, English folk tune, I gather. I didn't know that, I'm going to say. So, this is for Keenan Tunnel, When Jesus Came to Jordan. If you've got the ELW to hand, it's number 305 in the ELW. Such a wonderful tune, isn't it? Such a wonderful tune. And I should say, even though I was brought up with the Vaughan Williams harmonisation, the harmonisation there actually is really rather good. I don't know who did that one. It didn't say. But it was all right, wasn't it? It was all right. Uh, the next hymn, number three, is <clears throat> uh, a request from... Ooh, who's requested this? It just says, Clanfair which looks like a Welsh name. 
as in a Welsh town name, L-L-A-N-F-A-I-R. Are you in with us? How do I pronounce your name? Is that your name or is that where you're from? Either way, this person has requested, um, here is love, vast as the ocean. Uh, and he says, or she says, um, love vast as the ocean, what's not to like? Hmm. Let's, well, let's see. It is a gorgeous, a gorgeous tune. What is it again? Uh, here is love, right. Struggle to talk and, you know, scroll. There are 480 hymns in this hymnal now. And I've been doing this for less than a year using the, uh, the iPad here. And it just shows you how much the, um, the, hymn, the hymn book is growing. Oh, God. Good, goodness me, I can't find it. I'm struggling. I'm just going to have to just stop talking for a second. And now I'm going to have to employ someone to come and find, find the next hymn for me. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who is, who his love will not remember? Who can cease to sing his praise? He can never be gotten throughout heaven's eternal days. To, to the tune, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's composed by Robert Lowry, or Lowry. L-O-W-R-Y. Lowry. Could be Lowry. <laughs> I don't know. I've just said that. Uh, this one looks like quite a, a nice, gentle, a gentle hymn. So let's just use the mutations on the great organ. So this is the great division. This is the choir. And I've got the swell on the pedal over on this side. And the solo is over on over in this corner. Let's have a go with this one. Beautiful hymn. 
Ian, I did, I did see that Johnny has been putting together a composition competition, which is really good, isn't it? That's really cool. I'd be very interested to see who uh, submits music to it, uh, whether whether any of our Call for Composers uh, people are going, go into it. So if you don't know anything about this, at Blackburn Cathedral, they're um, in the process of um, calling out uh, for people uh, to submit uh, original and new compositions for a competition. Uh, the winner um, gets a prize, a financial prize, and their voluntary will be played on Easter Day by the famous Johnny Bombard Hosking. Um, there is a reason why he's called Johnny Bombard. It's not because he's particularly fond of the strings, put it that way. Uh, so it's well worth checking out. Uh, go on to Facebook and just um, find it on Facebook. Okay, hymn number four. We're in number four um, already. This is a request from me. Um, today's um, psalm in the lectionary um, was Psalm 40, at least in the Catholic lectionary, because I was playing, I played both Catholic and Church of England and now BIS. So I wonder what um, denomination we are. We're a very broad church, aren't we? I, I think we are the broadest church of all churches. What have I requested? Well, I have requested um, a hymn which um, sort of calls back to and is related to uh, Psalm 40, which, as I say, um, was in the lectionary today. It's I, the Lord, the sea and sky. Um, sometimes, no, sometimes just uh, called, here I am. Lord. And it sounds a little bit like this. Hmm.
all I had there was the melody, actually, and I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. So the melody there, uh, so I just have to make, make up some chords underneath, which I hoped uh, you recognise from your own hymnals. Good hymn that, isn't it? A really good hymn. The way um, the, the refrain really builds up. And um, it's really powerful. Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. Um, words were by Daniel um, Shute. Music was also by Daniel Shute. Um, and it comes from 1981, if you wanted to, wanted to know that. Okay. So, the next one comes in uh, from um, Harry Powell. Now, Harry um, has requested a hymn which starts like this. I want to just work out a way how I can say words you know, in between each hymn, to help me find the next hymn in here. So it is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise to the tune St. Edmund. Although actually in here, I've got the, hit, the, um, the tune Salzburg. I've got a feeling that is the correct one, though. Anyway, if it's not um, Harry, and you want me to play the correct hymn, let me know and we'll correct it for next week. Anyway, so, who have we got in with us tonight? Have we got any new people? If you're new tonight, please do say hello. Uh, I can see Dominic Kumar is requesting something by Bernadette Farrell. Maurice, hello Maurice, uh, Roger, Sandra Spears, uh, got lots of familiar faces, but if there's anyone new tonight, uh, please do let me know. Um, we're always very welcoming of new people. It's a good place to be on a Sunday because um, it's a very informal atmosphere. I don't normally wear a tie actually, I'm not quite sure why I'm, why I'm wearing a tie. Why am I wearing a tie today guys? I'll tell you why it is, because I've just come straight from Romsey Abbey, and I've forgotten to take it off. Anyway, let's keep it, let's keep it a little bit formal, shall we? Maybe later on the tie will come off when we get into the live requests. So speaking of which, between now and the end of the show, we have these pre-requested hymns, which have come into the BIS requests form during the week. Uh, we then go into a top five, which has been requested by one of your good selves. And then we go into the live requests. So if you want to, to request something live, if you want to sort of get uh, change the mood, you know, get me, play a party hymn. Is there a party hymn? Um, get requesting. Leave them as a super chat, okay? Super chats can cost you uh, as little as, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't even know what the minimum is, but it's, it's cents, it's pennies. So, and it also means I can see it as well because it comes up in a nice big clean colour. Uh, so anyway, it's the songs of thankfulness and praise. Jesus, Lord, to you we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar. Um, harmony for this tune, Salzburg, has been uh, composed, harmonised by JSB. JSB, as you all know, I'm sure, is, of course, the great man, Johann Sebastian Herbach. Bach. Here in England we say Bach, I don't know, we sort of make it make his name sound really posh, Bach. But actually it's Bach, it's, as we all know, in German it should be Bach, Bach. So, but it sounds odd when, we, when English people say Bach.
great tune. So Harry, that possibly was the incorrect tune. Hey ho. Good news is that that tune is a really good tune. And if it was entirely incorrect and you really want the other tune, St Edmund, let us know and we'll have it next week. But you've got to let me know by email. So next hymn is actually, uh, oh, this one comes in from me. Yay. And the reason I've chosen this one is because um, the Old Testament reading this morning uh, was Isaiah 49. And it's a, um, the hymn is Arise, Your Light is Come. And I can't possibly quote to you what Isaiah 49 was. So please don't ask me to do that. <laughs> Um, but this is um, this, this refers this refers to it. Arise, your light has come. The spirits call, obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines to uh, shines on you today to the tune, festal song. Uh, words are by Ruth Duck, good name, and the music is by William Walter. Is that all right? Does so anyone in the chat remember um, the uh, the Old Testament reading this morning? I think it depends which, which what church you're in. So I think so. I was again. I was in the Catholic cathedral in Arundel this morning. So in the Church of England, possibly were different. I don't know. The um, final words there, by the way, because I had to, you may have noticed I reached for the pedal reeds. Final verse is, arise, your light has come, the mountains burst in song. And then, uh, rise up like eagles on the wing, God's power will make us strong. And what stops, portray or colour the word strong? Of course, the big reeds, the swell reeds. And the pedal reeds give that feeling of richness and, and weight, don't they? I'm so happy that you're all chatting away. Please do keep chatting. It's uh, wonderful to see. It's wonderful to see. Um, I think Doug um, gave um, what, the read, what the actual um, Old Testament reading was. It was Isaiah 49, 1 to 7. I think that is right. Okay, so now going on to a request from Daniel. Daniel Kubaki. This hymn has a strong tune, full stop. Have fun with it, full stop. As I say, Daniel, always straight to the point. I like that, I like that. I look like faff and nonsense. God is working his purpose out. 
this is a notorious hymn uh, to play and, and sing because each verse has a different amount of um, syllables um, in each line. So the organist has to work out whether to put in any extra notes or not. So you'll have to listen very carefully to see whether I get it right. I don't think I will. I don't think I ever have in this hymn before. As long as, the, um, as long as there are always four beats in the bar, that's the main thing. And if the organist doesn't repeat a chord, who's going to notice really? But you are, because I told you to listen now. <laughs> God is working his purpose out as year succeeds to year. A great hymn actually to mark the turn of the new year, of course. I actually got through that one almost unscathed. That wasn't say it was entirely accurate, but at least we had four beats in a bar throughout the congregation, particularly in a, a Washington Cathedral or 
you know, a, a place with a big acoustic, you wouldn't know if the organist didn't repeat a chord. I hope, anyway. Right, so the next hymn, making good progress, um, is now related to, and Doug, you're going to have to let us know um, what the reading is in a bit more detail, but this is related to the New Testament reading this morning, uh, um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, let us build a house where love can dwell. It's a new one because I had to uh, download it this afternoon. A lot of today's hymns I've had to download for the first time into the hymnal, so I'm guessing that a lot of these are the, f are the first time that we've had them um, here on BIS, on, v um, on VC. Let us build a house. Let me find it. There it is. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Build of hope, uh, built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace, here the love of Christ shall end divisions. Does anyone know this? So I has a slight panic there because I think this is the entire thing, although I might be missing a refrain here. It's not in there. If it is, that would be great. If she, if we could find it, um, mm. uh, it's in my office because I was oh. scanning it earlier. Uh, because it looks like the, the refrain's missing. Because we wouldn't end in D minor. It might end in D minor, but the point is, it starts in F major and then it ends in D minor, with a C sharp very near the end, before then going back into F. It could be the way it was meant to be. I don't know. So whilst Caroline's getting the, getting the hymn book, I'll pull out the stops um, and we'll, we'll, we'll have a look in there. Peter, well spotted. I have indeed got new shoes. Here, have a look. They are um, from a company here in, in London um, called Superdance, S-U-P-A. Dance, one word, and I would highly recommend them to anyone, I think particularly here in the UK, who are in the markets for some new organ shoes, to check them out. I will be giving you a bit more information on them in the very near future. Um, there, is a ref there is a refrain, but it's a good job I spotted that. Um, I'll be doing something on them in the, in the very near future, but yes, well worth checking out if you're here in the UK and would want to invest in some new shoes. These are actually ballroom dancing shoes. So these are not organ shoes. They are ballroom dancing shoes and they are practice dancing shoes. And uh, the reason I went for them is because they are so incredibly comfortable. They instantly, instantly fit my feet without having to be broken in uh, and I'm very, very happy with them and they also look pretty cool as well I think they do anyway you might not I think they look all right they look rather fashionable and hey who's who's ever had a fashionable pair of organ shoes I think they're very snazzy snazzy there we go good word word of the uh, word of the night I think that's snazzy. snazzy so let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live
So that was Arise, Your Light Is Come. No, it wasn't at all. It was Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell and All Can Safely Live. Requested there by me. Next one is a request from one of you, though. Interesting, uh, good chappy. My, um, uh, I have turned up all my Blackburn near perspectives. Yeah, so the, my near perspective are on the max and the middle and rear are about 50%. That seems to get the balance about right, actually. So the next hymn comes in from me. It's The Voice of God. No, it doesn't. Hang on. Let me get my, let me get what I'm about to say correct. Okay, so it doesn't come in from me. It comes in from Alex M, who sent it through as a high quality scan. It is, the voice of God goes out to all the world. Let me just very quickly find it, if I can, whilst talking. I know, I think you've, very just, you've just been responsible for a vase breakage in Bill Ratey's house. Oh, well that's exciting. How, Your why? pedal line. Oh no, Bill, I'm really sorry. He's written, but... oops, we just lost a vase that committed suicide from the pedal line. Do you think the vibration sent it over the edge, literally? <laughs> I think um, I think two things there. I think um, I'm very impressed that my um, my feet have ca have caused a breakage over in America. That's pretty impressive. And the second thing is I think it's called a vase over in America, isn't it? Oh, is it? I don't know. I don't know. I know we call it a vase. I'm not an expert. But I think the Americans call it vase. I think it's pronounced very differently. They'll let us know, I'm sure. So the next one, as I've just said, is the voice of God goes out to all the world. His glory speaks across the universe. The great king's, the great king's herald cries from star to star with power, with justice. He will walk his way. And this is what Alex says. Uh, this hymn was selected as part of last week's top five. Uh, but to the tune... Um, that he that he didn't know. So this is actually uh, this was an Australian hymn, and I forget what, what the tune was. Uh, but so Alex has actually sent in the same words, but to a different tune. So the, the tune that Alex is familiar with is called Blackbird Lays, uh, because whilst it's very different, it's just as beautiful. Um, and the words calling for social justice for all are always relevant. So, um, the voice of God goes out to all the world uh, is um, words written by Luke um, Connaughton. Connaughton, it's an interesting surname. Um, and the music was by Peter Cutts, Blackbird Lays, it's called. It looks very beautiful. Let's see if it sounds beautiful. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will sound as beautiful as it looks. As long as you don't pull John Hoskins' favourite stop, it should sound... What's that, the Nazard? Is it that weird one that he did your darling happy birthday? I'm not going to pull out the, um, the Holtz Regal on the positive. Not for this. I might do. But that's a stop. Is that the one he likes, the Holtz Regal? He likes that's his favourite stop. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how the, um, the spirit takes us. Uh, let's, which angle should we go for now? Let's go for this one.
We Thanks. had two very generous donations during that. Um, one from Jerry, because the Jerry. Holtz Regal is cool. Yes, Even if it's I a bit unhinged when John Hosking plays it in a certain manner. From, yeah, I can see one from Ian Gardner who says, yes, Because a serpent is real. As opposed to. <laughs> yes, that's definitely John Hosking style. <laughs> that's John Hosking, isn't it? Um, but it was funny because it was your happy birthday and so people, it was people all the moods won't, of Richard McVeigh. People won't know what we're talking about. So on my birthday, I was very fortunate to have Johnny, um, John here uh, staying over at BIS and he played, we played a back-to-back -back VC and he improvised um, a version of Happy Birthday, which is rather off the wall. And he is a, he is a very off the wall improviser and he started off using that. Like... Uh, I can't do this in what he does. <laughs> and it was rather, it was rather good. So that's why, we, that's why we're totally joking about that. Stop. Alex, hope that was okay for you. <clears throat> the next hymn is a request from me. It is um, God of Church, Elect and Glorious. I've, I've chosen all these hymns today because they are related to the electionary. Um, Related, related to the hymns, readings in the lectionary. Uh, so this is another one related to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It's God of church, elect and glorious. Let me find it. There's been a bit of chat going on about animals living in organs. So there are some, there's been chat about in Bombay Cathedral, apparently there was an actual family of cobras that lived in, a, in the organ, so the original oh serpent. Really? And then uh, Andantino was talking about organs with bats. That's quite and common, then, surely. And then our yeah. organ has a cat in it from time to time. Oh, look, here she is, speak of the devil. Yes. She's finished her clean-up in the kitchen. She is a little bit of a and devil. And she's... Do you want to come see your friends, Nala? Oh, she's been very naughty, so don't, don't, don't encourage her. Here she is. Don't encourage her. <laughs> Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own special people, royal priests and heirs of grace. To, the, uh, to, to a very well-known tune, might be unfamiliar words, but it's very, uh, the very well-known tune looks EOI, which you'll know straight away, straight off the bat, when I play this, you'll all be singing it at home. I hope you are anyway, that's what I like to think. Here goes nothing. <laughs>
Well, that was a very naughty Noel Rawsthorn, and I also had a very naughty Nala. Where is she? She's in that mood tonight, isn't she? She's been in that mood for hours. She has. I don't know what. I don't know why she goes into those moods. It's Sometimes she's fine. Been so, so much rain. She's not getting enough exercise. Oh, well, Mary, is she hungry? I gave her some biscuits when she was being naughty when we went on air. So it's not Noel Rawsthorn who gets her revved up. Well, I don't. I don't know what it is, but she's just. In, she's been in that mood all evening, hasn't she? <laughs> yes. Oh, here she comes again. Oh, come on, she no. Was, she was sitting on the subwoofer earlier. It's, uh, that must have rattled her cage a bit. Right. Nala, what are you doing? I can't stop her. Roger Richards is up next. She's well, uncontrollable. You have to put her out. Don't, oh, she no, can't she's going to take us off she line. Can't possibly, yes, she, can oh, she go no. outside? Nala. Outside into oh, the air. No. Put her outside and lock the cat flap or back. something. Oh, I can't do that. Poor <laughs> Nala. The, the congregation will be up in arms if I locked her out on the They'll court. be also up in arms if we go offline. Winter's night. Stop, Nala, don't go Yes, on. exactly. You're not... Just take the situation under control. Yes, come on. Look at you, you're terrorist, aren't you? <laughs> She's really cold. Good grief. Right, Roger Richards, come on. <laughs> Roger's waiting patiently for his hymn. He's wondering what it is. If thou but suffer God to guide thee uh, with hopeful heart through all my ways, God will, uh, God will give strength whatever betide thee to bear thee, to bear thee through the evil days. Who... <laughs> who trusts in God's unchanging love builds on the rock that naught can move. You're naughty, aren't you? Oh, yes. Go on, you. Go on. Go over there. Venu uh, den lieben Gott is the tune. Go on, Nala. Out you go, please. Thank you. She's gone. Oh, thank heavens for that. Oh, Actually, gone. this marks the final hymn in our pre requested hymn section. Uh, before we go into our top five. Yay, that's my favourite section. Um, and it's a really good one this week. So wait to see what it is. In fact, after this hymn, we'll have an organ piece, which has been requested by Harry Powell. Uh, Harry requested a hymn earlier, and Harry was the one who I may have given the wrong tune to. So we'll make, up, make it up by playing the organ piece that he's requested. So we'll have this, and then we'll have an, a cheeky organ piece. Now... Oh yes, it's this one. I know this one. We had this one before, but I think it's a different words. This requires a bit of a plenum, guys. So a plenum is essentially the, the principal chorus. So the principles going up to two foot and then ex expanding into the mixtures as well. And it wouldn't be a miss, depending on the mixtures you have on the organ. And without getting too technical about it, whether it sounds any good or not, to, um, to throw a Nazard into that, so two and two thirds. I wouldn't stray any higher, like a Larigo or a TS, but a Nazard can fit quite nicely into a, into a principal chorus or a plenum with the mixtures. And this organ does a plenum particularly well, and this is what it sounds like.
Now that takes us very nicely actually into the next organ piece because it's in exactly the same key, G minor. Um, and this is a request from Harry Powell. Um, Harry, are you with us? Let us know. Please do say hello or if you're watching back on catch up, leave me a comment on the video and I'll, um, I'll get back to you. So Harry has requested um, that I play the, the little short, um, the short, not the little, uh, Prelude and Fugue in G minor, BWV 558. This comes from the eight short Preludes and Fugues, uh, the ones which are dubiously uh, written by Bach. But whoever they were written by, they are, they are very um, playable and very serviceable and actually make great pieces to have within the context of a service. So this is the one in G minor. So that was the short Prelude and Fugue in G minor, 
from the uh, eight short preludes and fugues by Bach. Not really by Bach, I don't think. These are actually re all really cool. The next one on A minor is, is pretty epic. <laughs> harpsichordal flat at the end is, um, you tell it's not by Bach because Bach never wrote any preludes or fugues in B flat, so it can't be by him. Also quite hard. That G minor uh, marks the end of the uh, pre-requested hymns. So that was it, you had 11 hymns there. We now have another five, but these have all been requested by one person. So David Hamilton has sent in uh, this top five. And let me just give you a little bit of a background. So David was brought up in the Church of Scotland with his dad being a parish minister in the rural southwest Scotland for many years. I began playing the piano in church when I was about 12 years old, accompanying the organ on a two manual Alain Digital, and progressed onto the organ a couple of years later. The, the church had a, a tracker pipe organ, uh, which had given up the ghost at some point in the 1980s, but the Alan made a decent sound. My first few years were characterised by a terror of the pedals. That never goes away, David. Uh, just how was I meant to coordinate left hand, right hand and feet? And it wasn't until I went to university in the late 90s that I began to play the organ properly, singing up to organ performance courses when I went on to exchange uh, I, I went on exchange to a university in the US for a year, quickly having to unlearn my largely self-taught pedal technique, which was a complete shambles. You obviously have not seen mine, David. I have since developed a, a deep love of French organ music, uh, Vienne, Vidor, Guillemot in particular. Uh, and then David says that he found BIS a couple of months into COVID lockdown in 2020, uh, have been searched on YouTube for traditional hymns. And then he writes, so glad that he did. The, week, the weekly concerts and hymns were to continue uh, and continue to be a true tonic. Vidor's sixth organ symphony from last, sum, uh, last summer being a particular highlight. That's very kind, David, thank you. The following top five are, I suspect like many, subject to change depending on circumstances and mood but I gravitate back to these time and time again. I think that's what we all say, you know, one week it's one top five, and then the next week it's a very different top five. <clears throat> By the way, I have omitted uh, St. Patrick's breastplate, as I think I've trespassed on your goodwill long enough with that one. Well, that's because we've had that one quite a few times. So let's start at number five. There's some haggis chat tonight in the chat. Lovely. You love haggis, don't you? Oh, I can't get enough. 
Of it. Maurice is to blame for the haggis chat. Right. Is it Burns last night, Maurice? Was, no, it was, it, was a few, it was a few days ago. Mm. Um, Friday. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. So, number five. <laughs> when you at Haggis, tell them the story about the whiskey. It's quite funny. I might do after, after we've done the top five. Okay. We're now in the full flow of top five. Okay. Well, we're not in Haggis anecdotes just yet. <laughs> so, uh, Dave says about number five. I love this... Uh, uh, I love the, re the reminder... Uh, sorry. I love the reminder this hymn is of... I'm not quite sure what... Um, I think you've got some words in the wrong order there. Um... This hymn is of the certainty of the Christian hope that Christ has indeed become the precious cornerstone of the Church of God. It is also a wonderful um, Trinitarian hymn, speaking of the mystery of the three persons of the Godhead. A fabulous tune by Henry Purcell as well, which I'm sure you can now guess what it is. Now you've written here, if you can be cheeky, if I can be cheeky, Please, can I play it in B flat? I'm not sure I can actually play it in B flat. Um, and then he actually, rather comically, he says here, there are versions in G, but that's just plain wrong. Well, I'm actually going to play it in G today because, not just because you've said that, because actually the, the score I've got here is in G. Well, don't do that. It's just top five. Yes, but I haven't got it in A. Well, I'll get it for you in A. That's not fair on the poor man. It's his top five. If it's just plain wrong, you can't do his top five plain wrong. Play that then, please, because there's now a gap. That's like talking about about um, haggis. Just plain wrong. Here we go. We're going to do it not quite the right key that he requested, but no, we'll do it in A. A's a good key, I think, isn't it? Don't know why it's in G in some hymn books. Here it goes. So number five in um, David's list is Christ is made the sure foundation and the precious cornerstone to the tune Westminster Abbey.
Cool, I hope that puts us into a good start, doesn't it? Number five, Christ has made the sharp foundation, takes us into number four. This hymn, set to a wonderful Welsh tune, has long been a particular favourite of mine, although I had uh, someone come up to me a few Sundays ago to say that they thought the tune was a bit dirge-like. Pfft, he says, not at all. The last verse is just fabulous. Speaking of the steadfast and unfailing love Christ has for his people and also the astonishing fact that Christians on earth are just as secure in their salvation as those who are already in heaven. Although those in heaven are far, are happier by far. There are some good things on earth to be happy about, David. <laughs> the tune that David is talking about and the hymn he has requested at number four is a debtor to mercy alone to the tune uh, tree win uh, that's t-r-e-w-e-n so let's 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 have a go at this one um let's get the chrome on out on the positive let's prepare that one Let's see. I don't think this is going to be dirge. We don't have dirge here on BIS, as long as we keep it moving. Let's, go, let's keep it moving along nicely. Taking us into number three, where um, David says, This is one of those hymns um, that I just never tire of hearing or singing. 
Although I grew up singing the hymn to uh, Haydn's Austria, uh, which I also do love, I do find this tune more musical somehow. I love this hymn for its mind and heart lifting quality, raising us up to see the glory of heaven and the infinitely more glorious God at its centre. Somewhere all Christians long to be. Well, you're all longing to know what it is. I'm sure some of you have guessed what it is by the fact that I mentioned uh, Haydn's tune Austria. It can only be, of course. Glorious things of thee are spoken to the tune Abbot's Lee. Or Abbot's Lay, maybe. There we go. Andrew Luce wrote it in the chat just as I was saying it. So Andrew Luce, you get a you get a gold star. This is number three. Glorious things of thee are spoken. Fantastic hymn this. Yeah, someone did say in the chat that often the last line is sung incorrectly. It should be. And of course, what a lot of people do is this. You can hear that. I don't know why you can hear that. Oh. We all know that's entirely wrong. 
Anyway, Scandal. thank you very much to those people who have just been donating. I just want to call out um, Robert and uh, William as well, who've uh, just, uh, just, just donated. So thank you very much for that. It's good to see some uh, requests coming in as well, so we'll capture those and we'll have those after um, David's top five. One of Robert's neighbours commented that his, his organ playing had improved greatly because he had you on full volume in his home office. <laughs> Excellent. Full <laughs> he, volume. He didn't, he didn't admit that it wasn't him playing. He just <laughs> smiled and said thank you. <laughs> Excellent. I'm happy for you, Robert, to take all the credit, honestly. <laughs> Do you take it? That's fine. Um, good. This now takes us into number two in David's list. This is a bit of a banger. Very well known hymn. And it is one of the uh, most popular hymns we have on BC because it made our top 20 list uh, that we did last year where we compiled um, a very scientific uh, top 20 list of where we brought together all of the requests, and, well, all of the hymns I've ever played on Virtual Church. And then we added up which hymn was the most popular. And it was this one, I think. Maybe, no, it wasn't. This was, a, this was no, it wasn't. It was actually another one. Was this was, this was very near, very near the top. Uh, let, me, let me read what David says about it. So number two in David's list, it says, he says, it's not for nothing. That's, not, that's an interesting, <laughs> interesting saying. <clears throat> it's not for nothing that this is one of the most requested hymns on BIS. What did I just say? It's a hymn of praise to God in all seasons and circumstances of life and has been a hymn that has been a great comfort during cha uh, challenging times. Tempests waging war and darkness and sin abounding. And also in good times uh, with his daily mercies attending me, with his daily mercies attending me, I can certainly attest to the truth of these profound words. Uh, the tune is also a personal favourite and I love it. Uh, and I love giving it the beans for verse 5 with a bit of Noel Rawsthorn thrown in for good measure. Well, luckily for you, David, what do I have here? Noel Rawsthorn's book with food all over it still. It would eventually come off, I'm sure, um, in good time. David is, of course, talking about praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation, to the tune, Lobe den Heron, of course. So let's have a little bit of this.
praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation, uh, to the wonderful tune there, Lob Den Herrn. Now, of course, that takes us into number one. This is quite a complicated one. So you're going to have to hold on to your hats with this one, I think. I hope you know how it goes, because I'm not entirely sure. I'm not, I'm not convinced I've got it right. This is what, um, this is what Daniel says about, uh, David sorry, uh, says about his number one. This setting of Psalm 24 uses two glorious psalm tunes. It was only when I went to university that I came across this through the organist of the church I attended. He also got me hooked on devising alternative harmonies for final verses. The words are, of course, wonderful uh, as they are scripture itself. Psalm 24. Telling us of the Lord's control over the whole earth and that we need to keep ourselves pure, to be acceptable in his sight, to be able to approach him. That we can't do this ourselves leads into the second half of the psalm, where the music transitions from B-flat of the first tune into E-flat of the second tune. And the pomp and circumstance of Christ's glorious return to heaven after making atonement for sin and being raised to life again. The final hallelujahs and amens bring the psalm to an uplifting conclusion and shouldn't be rushed, but played with appropriate grandeur. And then he ends with by saying, with heartfelt thanks for another year of tremendous music and best wishes for the year ahead. David. Well, David Hamilton, thank you very much for sending in your top five hymns. The final hymn, number one in David's list, is The Earth Belongs to God Alone, and all that and all that it contains, the world and its inhabitants, God's steadfast love maintains. Now he mentioned to him two uh, tunes. The first tune is called Saint Matthew, which you hear three times. And then we zoom into a tune called Saint George's Edinburgh, um, which as David says, is in E flat. So the subdominant of B flat. Let me have a look at this. How does this work then? So we go verse seven, which goes there, then verse eight, which goes there, and then we go with, with a DC. Oh heavens! Okay, but who? Why are there two words going on at once? That was verse ten. Verse eight. Verse 9 goes there, and then verse 10, King. Okay, I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. That's not actually that complicated. Although it is a little bit. Oh, yeah. The, the, okay, right. Enough talk. I've worked it out. I've just worked out the geography. This is number one. The earth belongs to God alone. Well, you'll know the first tune without doubt. In fact, if anyone, anyone doesn't know the first tune, let me know, because I'll be... Surprised. I'd be interested actually to know who doesn't know it. It goes a bit like this, guys.
how about that? Didn't know the second tune there, but I um, was very, very familiar with the first one. But the second tune, very powerful, isn't it? Everyone was saying, wait for the hallelujahs, and then they were all singing hallelujah as you got to the end. Yeah, well, they, there they were. brings an end, uh, a close to David Hamilton's top five hymns and what a, a what a list it was. Thank you very much. If you want to send in your top five, lead by David's example there. It was a good uh, list and he um, wrote just the right amount of information as to why each hymn had been chosen and what each hymn meant to him. And also a little bit of a background into you as well wouldn't go astray, as long as it isn't too waffly. Um, so send in your top fives. We are working through them. We've had a top five now probably for the past seven months or so. Is it really that long? Wow. I when we started doing them. Well, we, I mid last year. Wow. Um, and we've done one every week pretty much since then. So... It's a good way for us all to get to know each other, isn't it? Now right. it's back. Now, I it... think and the time should come off. Oh, now it's back. And we should get into now the informal mode. Take the tie off. Don't worry, that's all that's coming off. And let's have now the, the informal section now. So this is where I play your live requests. So the first... Uh, it didn't come in chronologically first, but it, the first hymn is Pete Baron Krieger, our friend over yeah. in the USA, who has requested a hymn that he's, he knows is one of your favourites too, Richard, because he's been Immortal, listening for a long time. Invisible. Well, how about you find me the, um, the hymns for refreshing worship? Oh, book. that one, yeah. Um, because in the final verse, there is a nice bit descant by um, one hero. of my idols, Barry Rose. Did you know that I'm, I'm reading Barrow's um, autobiography, Sitting on a Pin, it's, fan, it's fantastic. And did you know that when he left, uh, he was a master of the choir uh, of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and what a choir he had at St. Paul's, untouchable by any other choir in the world. Boys' choir, church choir. And when he left St. Paul's, under a little bit of a cloud. Um, final week, every day the choir sang, bearing in mind his name is Barry Rose, every, choir, every day the choir sang a setting of what do you think? Ian's just said it, there is no rose. I think that was rather clever. <laughs> there we go. So, Immortal, Invisible, and the reason I mentioned Barry is because the final verse has a, has a, wee, a wee descant by, by Barry, and it's rather nice. Here we go, one of my favourite hymns.
So the descant there goes like this. So it starts off. And then it goes. <laughs> and that would just sound amazing with um, all the boys and girls just really singing it. It really would. It's a fascinating book, actually. Um, for the royal wedding of Prince um, Charles and Princess Diana in uh, St. Paul's, Barry was uh, essentially um, vetoed from making any uh, musical choices for the, for the entire service. So he was actually conducting the choir. It was his choir singing. So they were um, forefront, center stage, all eyes on the choir, hundreds of millions of people watching around the world. Barry Rose had no say in any of the music. Um, it was also forbidden by David Wilcox to write any descants to any of the hymns. And he wasn't best happy about that. So one of the hymns, I forget which one it was now, wasn't this one. Um, it was one of the hymns he actually rehearsed. He wrote a descant secretly, rehearsed it with the boys secretly, and they didn't rehearse it in the building in front of anyone until the day. In fact, I think the very first time they sang it with the full choir was in the service. I think good on Barry for doing that. He got, he got in descant. I think the actual service, the full service, is online to watch. Well, most of it is. Not in super duper quality, but it's well worth watching. Just even for the standard of the boys and the men. That's amazing. Anyway. So up next, this is a request from Robert Sulaski. It's uh, one of his favourite hymns, and he said he'd like it loud, which on this sample set is um, mm. not difficult. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking me to play loud. That's like play calling loud, yeah. Um, yeah. a bull to a red rag, isn't it? Putting a red rag to a bull. Yeah. Right, so, for all the saints who from their labours rest, who thee by faith before the world confess, sine nomine is the tune, and it's by Rafe Vaughan Williams. So, shall we engage tuba? Shall we engage imperial trumpet? Shall we engage all of those stops? All of those stops? All of those couplers? And shall we have a little bit of a, a bit of a romp?
jolly good idea. Mm. I like that idea. For all the saints who from their labours rest. I thought the saints needed a Zimbelstein at the end. Did. Did. Our local football team are called the saints, actually. Or one of our local teams. Right, I, I right, can see... Yeah, so uh, there are a couple of duplicate uh, requests. Well, tonight. I can see one First, here. Yes, exa I was going to, yes, exactly. But just um, very quickly... Yeah. So, um, yes. Elizabeth initially asked for either Lord of Sea and Sky, but we've we'll had that one. that one tonight. Yep. And also, somebody who was it requested Abbot's Lee, but we've actually had Abbot's Lee, haven't we? Because we, it was in the top we five. We have had that one already. So, already? who was it that asked for Abbot's Lee? It was Gregory Potter. Gregory. He, yes. he asked for the words "God is love, let heaven adore him." Um, so, we're not going to play that one if that's all right, Gregory, just because we've already had it tonight. Um, but we are going to move on to another one of our favourites, hymn number 408 in the English hymnal, which yeah, is... Yeah, so Gregory, we had, um, if you rewind, we actually had uh, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken to that tune, uh, Abbot's Lee, or Lay. Um, so if there's something else that you want in its place, Gregory, please do let us know. But for now... Oh, he's just put one in the chat, actually, an alternative, I think. Good one. Good choice as well, Gregory. Good choice. We're now going to have Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, requested by Carmen. Thank you very much, Carmen, for all of your kind words over the past few months to the tune Blind Worm. Of course, what other tune could we possibly have? What tune do you think we should have, little scallywag? Hey, oh dear. <laughs> what happens when you panic, Bobby? Hey? Are you going to stay there? I don't think you're going to stay there, are you? You'll never. You'll never stay there. You're not going to stay there, are you, Bobby? No way, Jose. Right, so love divine. Come on, Bobby. This is Come a bit on. loud for you, I think. Come on. Yeah, she's a sensitive soul. You've got sensitive ears, haven't you? She's our Bobby. She's a sensitive cat. <laughs> sensitive cats and Blackburn Cathedral don't go hand in hand or paw in paw.
good hymn that, isn't it? Good hymn. Should we go into O Worship the Lord? Yep, for Gregory, his second choice. The one with the upbeat. In verse one. It's O Worship the King, I think. Oh, is it? Is that, are we sure that's the right one? Yeah. To the tune Hanover. Uh, not, yes, uh, Hanover, please, he says, yeah. I see, that's, that's, that's not the one I was thinking of. I was thinking it's there, of it's in the NEH, just there. If you want it, this one. That one? Yep, that's it. We've got a funky discount in the NEH there for you, if you want, though. Okay, that's Alan Gray, isn't it, that one? I don't know, but it's funky. I don't know if it's So this is some Gregory. I worship the King, O glorious above, O gratefully sing his power and his love. Have you, um, I don't think, you, uh, well maybe you have, Archbishop Patrick would like to know, Richard, have you ever played at Armagh Cathedral or St Patrick's in Dublin? Have you played? No, I've played Christchurch Cathedral in Dublin. I knew you'd done one of them. And a few of the others, but I don't think I've played those ones. Not yet anyway. Just waiting for that invitation. Elizabeth. It was her second choice because she asked for either Lord of Sea and Sky. Elizabeth Brown. Elizabeth Brown has asked for um, one of our favourite hymns here. All my hope on God is 
founded. I think she said they had it at their wedding. I might be wrong because the chat's moved on a bit since yeah. then, but I think that's what well, she said. A great hymn to have at a wedding, I would say, uh, to the wonderful tune by um, uh, uh, Howells, uh, to the tune called Michael. And I will play in the final, for the final verse, I'll play Howells' very own Reharm. It's a bit off the wall, but it's his own. So we'll have to have it. All my hope on God is founded. Great hymn, this. What a hymn that is, as um, Fiona has just said. Ooh, love this. <laughs> I do as well. Alan Matthew, ooh, lush, 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 that last verse. Um, in Exor says, this reharmonization starts like the organist just flung the hymnal off the desk, turning a page, I can assure you. What I played was what was written. A wonderful chord, this, the E flat in it. Excellent. So, so it, um, Jerry says this has been a top shelf BC. Well, it has, absolutely, but it's actually th th these last requests that have come in are pretty much some of Richard's top five, aren't they? So, um, yeah. you're just being given great hymns to play and you are happy to play them. As I, as I keep saying, the better 
your requests are, the more you chat, you know, it really influences how VC goes. So it's down to you guys for requesting all of these hymns. Well, apart from Hunk, I've, I threw three in today, didn't I, I think? Um, so uh, this is actually a really beautifully quiet hymn. Now it's coming from Glenn Snyder, who has been with us for a very long time. So Glenn, I really appreciate your company. Um, Schmuck dich, deck thyself, my soul with gladness, leave the gloomy haunts of sadness. Beautiful, very calm hymn this. We'll have this and then we'll go into a hymn uh, requested by Robert Salarski, who's been very generous tonight. So thank you very much. Uh, and that's Holy, Holy, Holy to the tune Nicaea. And then after Robert's hymn, we should have an organ voluntary. Don't quite know what the organ voluntary might be. So if you have some suggestions, um, something that you know I'm, that I can play, <laughs> um, I think something fairly uplifting. I think it should be fairly loud based on the last hour of hymns that we've just had. So Caroline and um, James Palmer, who is, do, who is doing a bit of behind the scenes production tonight. Thank you, James. Um, we'll, we'll keep an eye out and then They'll shout them out to me and I'll say yes, no, or what are you thinking? Here we go. Schmuck dich, deck thyself.
Well, Nicaea is a tune. The words, uh, by the way, Nicaea was written by John um, Dykes. And the words were written by uh, Reginald Heber. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. <laughs> Jenny Allen just said, grab your vases. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah. It was very growly at the end. A lot of people said growl in the chat, including me. We like the growl, don't we, Nala? Nala's back. She's being a bit more calm, actually. So, what have people been asking for? for oh, my goodness. What haven't they been asking for? So, Daniel Kibaki, Howl's up to number one. Jerry Marshall just recently. said plus one for some Howl's. Um, uh, was it the Jigu Takata? No, it was Grand Q. Well, we had that one, yeah. And also, but, or, or, was it, or was it the Jigu? No, it wasn't. Uh, Dubois Takata. There we go. The Jigu Grand Cru Dialogue. Dubois Takata. Um, something by Percy Whitlock from Ian. Um, oh, yeah. That's the, um, the folk tune. BWE 538, nice. Dorian Takata from A Case. Well, let's have, then, because we haven't had this for a while, the Grand Cour. Oh, wow, that, that, that's brave. You haven't played this uh, brave. Brave or foolish, I don't know. You, you guys be the judge. N Nala's ready to judge. <laughs> don't judge, please. Um... Now, should I leave the pedal reeds on throughout? She's purring. I think she's judged well. Okay, here we go. This is the voluntary. Welcome to the voluntary. We've made it to the end. Oh, it's been a long one tonight, hasn't it? Two, over two and a half hours. Let's go in, in for some Eugene Jigu, the Grand Cour. This is the one uh, that, which is a, it's a, literally a dialogue between the reeds, the big reeds, and then the, the rest of the organ. Let's see which one wins. Nala, stop pressing my chat. She's...
Well, there we go. That was in part the Jigu Grand Cour dialogue. In part. In part. No, I liked it, but she did leave in the middle when it got very loud. She's come back now. <laughs> yeah, I know. A bit like that, isn't it? It's just quite loud. Anyway, so that draws a close to the end of VC. I'm just. Um... Before you draw a close, can I just say hello to Merv Whitney, who is a new listener today, and he's, hello, Merv. he's thanked you very much for your um, selections and has really enjoyed himself. And it's Excellent. Listen again. Good so, to have you with us. Hello, it's Merv. always good to hear from new people. Uh, so if you are new, please do just get involved. Please do chat. Uh, and if we you had are a comment. new, um, watching back on catch up, of course, just leave me a comment saying hello, newbie here, uh, and I'll get back to you to say hello and welcome. We had a comment from Garrett. Um, now I know again why I think that Blackburn is a Fringlish organ. The French sounding reeds combined with the English sound English. pressure and thickness. You just made that word up. Fringlish. Good word. But it is, it's great. I, I, it's just fab. A brilliant virtual church, isn't it? Because it just does the very soft strings on the solo and the swell. Has a, it has the gorgeous flutes. It has the mutations. You, well, I don't even need to tell you. You've heard it. You've heard it for yourselves. If you are in the market for an English cathedral organ, um, you've got to buy this one. It's, um, uh, I forget what the website... Um, the company is called who even make it. Song. No, it's not even song. Oh. Please, can somebody write it in the chat? But if you go into Google and just type in uh, Blackburn Cathedral Help to Work, it will come up and you should go and check it out. You can get it for free, uh, for five pounds for two weeks, which that is absolutely better than nothing, isn't it? It's like a trial, isn't it? A nice trial. It's a trial, but you, you definitely want to keep it after that. So I'll draw it to a close. Thank you all so much. I hope you're having a really good week. Oh, Ian Gardens giving you the name, but I can't pronounce it's it. It's in the chat. If you're having a really good week, or not, just let let me let me know. Leave me a comment in the video. Uh, I love to hear from everybody. By the way, I do read every single comment that gets left on my channel. I have the um, the YouTube Studio app on here, and every time I open the Studio app, I have a whole load of new comments to read spanning over videos which I've done from years ago all the way up to the present day I read them all and I really appreciate them all particularly the positive ones <laughs> so please leave me lots of comments and another another top trick if you don't want to miss any content that I'm doing here on BIS um, you know two three videos a week three max um, if you want to if you want to keep abreast of uh, when I put a video online, click the bell icon next to where it says subscribe. It literally looks like a bell. Click that and then click notifications all. I promise you won't get bombarded with notifications from BIS because I don't upload every day. I tend to do uh, two, sometimes three a week. So click that button. We all said cheerio. Look at you, you look, you look absolutely jiggered. You look jiggered, my darling. Because she's been running around. We'll say cheerio. Good night, everyone. You take care. We'll see you next week. Cheerio. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>